One of the easiest and most inexpensive ways to control the heater element in your still. No matter who you are, that's just plain cool. Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George, the channel that dares to unlock the mysteries of home distilling, as we always say here. Uh, we're going to start a new series on um, controlling the heat source inside a still if you're using electricity, uh, which is a bunch of folks. Um, so, uh, and this applies to a bunch of other hobbies as well, like Bakelite ovens and a bunch of other different systems where heat is the function that you're trying to control. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, all you've got to do is subscribe and get all the updates and, yeah, just track us through because we go through a lot of stuff. Uh, and for those of you who are just kind of hanging around there and waiting for the opportunity, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Costs you absolutely nothing, and we do benefit. Thank you. Now, well, um, when you're controlling a still and uh, you're using a heater element, this, here's an example. This is a heater element and it's wired up and it doesn't matter what type of heater element it is. Well, it does matter what type it is, but this one happens to be a 120 volt, uh, 2500 watt, uh, 2000 watt element. Uh, and it's got just the two wires that come on, just like a light bulb. Uh, but we can't see what's going on in here, but we can see what's going on here, so we use a light bulb as our demonstration to kind of give us a visual aid of what's going on inside the element. Now, I would not plug the element in here because that's what's known as dry firing. Oh, what happens when you dry fire an element? Yeah, it turns cherry red and it starts to bend and it'll break. Uh, it'll, it'll fail on you. This needs to be submerged. Okay, the... The, the, the least expensive, I'm talking about down and dirty, the cheapest way to uh, control a heater element, which we'll use this as an example, uh, in your still is the following. Um, you know this, you simply either you plug it in, it's on, you unplug it, it's off. Uh, but that's not practical uh, because we want to make sure we can provide an, and generate enough heat to get up to our temperature but we don't want to overheat it. So we need to be able to control the amount of energy that is being put into the still. Now, um, as we go through these videos, we're going to start with this one, which is the most inexpensive and straightforward, easy to wire, uh, and then we'll work our way up to some of the other more complex systems and we'll build our own right here for you so you can follow along and build your own. This is known as a solid state relay, all right? Uh, for lack of better, uh, most of you have seen these before, but a solid state relay replaces the old mechanical relays. Uh, and if you're familiar with a relay, it's really just like it's got two points and it's got a piece of metal filament that goes in between the two points and it makes contact. But there, that's a physical change that takes place and they tend to wear out and spark. And response time, there, there's a lot of variables that go along with that, but in a solid state relay, that happens electrically. So there's no physical parts that are moving, so it's got an extremely, extremely long uh, duty cycle, uh, life cycle, uh, so it will run, it'll probably outlast you. Um, this one here in particular we have, now remember, all solid state relays are not created equal. This is the one I bought off of Amazon. Oh, by the way, this one is $15.99 for all the components that you need, and it comes together. Um, and this is called the this is a S, an SSR 40VA. And I'll write that. There you go. Just type that into your search bar into Amazon. Uh, and in the past, I've put in links to Amazon, but you know how sometimes. Uh, suppliers will discontinue, and I'll get an email back that says, George, that link doesn't work anymore. I, I, I can't control Amazon. So just type in, go to your Amazon search bar or even just your Google search bar and type in SSR-40VA. And the VA stands for variable and then AC current, okay? A variable method to control AC current because we're working on phase control. And in phase control, what happens is, is 
as I turn my potentiometer, that comes with it, uh, this thing starts to come on, and when it gets to about 41 volts, I start to get a light. There, I dim that all the way down. Now, just think of your heater element operating on less voltage and amperage, oh, by the way, uh, as it's rated for. Well, it doesn't get quite as hot. So you could now control it, and you can control that from zero all the way up to 100%. And then as I turn that up a little bit more and provide a little bit more voltage and amperage, they're byproducts of each other in this particular case, it gets brighter, therefore your element gets hotter until you can turn it all the way up towards 100% so it's providing the heat that it's designed to provide. Or you can just turn it off. Very useful tool. It's real simple to, to wire. Here's how this thing is wired before we get into any schematics or diagrams. We've got a 120 volt main line that comes in hooked on a extension cord and of course with 120 volts you have two lines you have a well three lines you got of course the ground then you have a neutral and then you have a hot wire and so what we do is we take the hot wire which in most cases is sort of like the convention will be the black wire and if it's not the black wire it will be the wire that's connected to the smaller post the smaller blade so we connect that to pin number one on our solid state relay and then we run another one from pin number two off of our solid state relay to our receptacle and that goes on the brass side of the screws the brass side is the hot side and the silver side is the neutral side then we run the neutral wire from our power source directly to the silver side that's on that side yeah the silver side of the uh, receptacle and then, of course, the ground goes to the ground screw. That is it as far as power supply. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use the solid state relay to interrupt these two pins. So power here to power here is interrupted, and it will not flow to the receptacle. Therefore, it will not flow to the element, or in this case, the light bulb. So no matter what you do, it will not come on. Now, right now, we have power going through there, and I should have been careful. I could have shocked myself. <laughs> the, uh, the potentiometer that comes with it, and this is a 470K ohm, 2 watt. It will explain the difference. Now, this, what this potentiometer does is this potentiometer controls the phase angle of the electricity flowing through the solid state relay just by means of adjusting the resistance inside the solid state relay. And by adjusting that resistance, it allows the voltage to flow either partially or fully, or somewhere in between. So there we go. That is a, this is not, this is not polarity specific. Uh, let me do some drawings for you so you got this whole thing understood. I've drawn this up on the board so you can get an idea. If you're looking for one of these, make sure you get the right one, all right? And the easiest way to tell is it's a VA model. And you'll see here is SSR-40VA, and that's a variable for AC voltage, okay? Uh, remember, they, they come in DD, DA, and VA. A DD is a direct current control to control direct current going out through the output. A DA, which is normally what we use in a PID, would be the direct current into the bottom, the pins three and four, which provide a 12 volt source to control AC voltage through the output. In a VA, we're gonna place a potentiometer on pins three and four to control an AC variable potentiometer A for AC. We're gonna control an AC voltage on the output. All right. Now, here's the way these things are labeled so that you get a clear understanding of what you're looking for. Um, you've got pin one and pin two. That's an in and an out or an in and an out. It doesn't matter. Uh, I usually use the convention one is in, two is out. Uh, and it's written up here as output. That's what you're controlling. That's where the control takes place. 
and it's a small block. He usually writes 24, and this one is to anywhere between 24 and 380 volts of AC current, and it's rated at 40 amps. So it'll handle up to 40 amps of current. Um, and the, 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 the rating, you can get them at 25, 40, 50, 60, 70, you can get up to 100 amp. Uh, the, the amperage load that it will handle has much, much to do with its circuitry inside and its ability to dissipate heat because the byproduct of high amperage is always going to be heat. All right, uh, and then again, of course, it's model number. And then on the bottom, you'll notice on pins three and four, and these are also irrespective of each other. They are not polarity specific, but they connect, which known here, this is a resistor, but it's a variable resistor because it's got an arrow drawn through it. That's the symbol for a variable resistor. And this is a 500K, 500,000 ohm resistor at a quarter watt. Uh, and remember, I think we already mentioned that, that a quarter watt is the smallest you want to go. I've got one here that's a 200 watt, I'm, I'm sorry, a 2 watt, uh, and this will control up to 480 volts. So that's, and the wattage rating of a resistor is really its ability to dissipate heat uh, based on voltage. Uh, and yes, there's a formula for that, but it's not useful for us right now. I just happen to know it, but it's, it, you can look it up. Uh, a quarter watt resistor or a quarter watt rated solid state relay is plenty uh, because it will handle up to 383 volts. Uh, this one here is rated up to 380, so we're fine. Oh gosh, this is this is beautiful the way this thing works because it is so simple. Let's talk about our voltage. All right, our voltage coming in. And I've got a neutral line and I've drawn that in blue, but normally the wire will be white. Uh, if I drew up in white, you'd never see it. So that's our neutral line. Of course, the green is the ground line and black is the hot, the 120 volt on single phase. Don't let that confuse you. That's really what normal household current, your refrigerator, your coffee pot, your lights, uh, just about everything inside a standard household, unless you're in the European Union or in some other countries where they do the same thing, but it's 220 volts as opposed, and it works exactly the same way. Electricity doesn't care where it is in the world. It works the same way. Uh, it's just whatever that country has decided to use as its base. Okay, so, oh, um, the way we actually do this, no, no, We've got a load here. That's we always call that a load. That could be a light bulb. That could be a, a heater element. That could be a bake light oven. That could be anything in the world. Uh, and it's going to have terminals on it. It'll have a terminal for a hot wire. It'll have a terminal for a neutral. Uh, let's do this in the same color. And it will also have at some point, somewhere, or in your switching somehow, you're going to have one for a ground. Uh, and that's just the way all loads are. Loads are going to match your source. Well, here's what we do. Um, we'll take the neutral wire straight from the source. I better get into the right color. Straight from the source, and that's going to go to the load. That goes straight to the load. Well, so does your ground. Your ground is going to go straight to your load. Now, remember we talked about that you plug it in, it works. You unplug it, it doesn't work. Watch this. If we take the 120-volt leg and we put it to the number one pin, and then we take another wire from the number two pin and run that to the other leg, what do we have? Well, we now have a complete circuit if this is energized. This is now a switch, for lack of better words. Uh, it is a variable switch, though, like a dimmer switch in your house. But remember, your dimmer switches are rated on a very, very low wattage and very low amperage, so you can't run a heater element with a regular standard household dimmer switch. It'll burn it up. Oh, so here's what happens is when this is energized, we've got power that goes in, comes out, goes in, and then you have your neutral return. You've got your safety ground, so that means your load is going to work. That's like plugging it in. When we turn it off, that line is broken. So that now cannot flow to your load, so you no longer have power, so your load is off. 
See how simple that works? And that's, and I don't care if you're going to wire a PID or if you're going to wire this with a, uh, um, a variable uh, potentiometer or if you're going to use a, um, oh, a pulse width modulator. They're all wired exactly the same way because the principle is, remains the same. The control mechanism is what changes. All right. Whew, we're getting somewhere now. How does the potentiometer work? Real now, I'm of the opinion that if you know how something works from start to finish, should something go wrong in the between, you'll know how and where to go to fix it. So let's talk brief, very briefly about the potentiometer itself, and that is the controlling mechanism. How does this thing actually work, and what do I need to know about it? Well, and how do I wire it? Uh, it's relatively simple, because there's only two wires. A very, very small charge is, is going to run through these wires, almost imperceptible. But what takes place is, I've drawn this thing upside down, okay? So you've got, and normally a potentiometer looks just like this. It's a circle, and it's got three pins that are sticking out of it. They're on the bottom, which kind of confuses a lot of people. Said, how do you wire this thing? How do you make it work? Well, a potentiometer is not just for that variable control for a light. Uh, you can use that for gain control, you can use that for balancing, you can use it for splitting, doing a whole bunch of different things. But we're only going to use it for variable control, so we only need two pins. And I'll show you why. Inside a potentiometer, you've got these two points here that are connected to these pins. And then all the way around here, you've got a resistive material. And that resistive material is measured out, and in this particular case, this one is a 470 K ohm resistor. Okay, so that means that from this point all the way around to this point, there's 470,000 ohms of resistance. And what does resistance do? Resistance impedes or slows down and can even, if it's excessive, stop the flow of electricity. All right, that's the resistance. Um, and it, with the center pole here, that center tab, is connected to what we call a sweep arm and that's electrically connected there and this is your dial and you're so you've got a sweep arm that starts here or wherever you've got that dial at that's where it starts and it sweeps across as you turn that dial it sweeps across this resistive material and changes the resistance between this pin and this pin so what we would have is, and I've got this wired up red and black, I've got a red one that goes here, and I've got a black one that goes here. So what I'm doing now is I'm using my potentiometer to adjust the resistance within this circuit to control this output. It's that simple and that straightforward. Uh, qu real quick question, what would happen if we use these two pins instead? Well, it, it's going to work, uh, but it's just going to work backwards. So instead of right being all the way on and left being off, well then left will be all the way on and right will be all the way off. That's the only difference. So that's how a potentiometer works. It's just a sweeping motion across a resistive material to impede the flow of your voltage. And that, in the very end, is what controls the voltage that goes to our load. So for those who want to do this for less than 20 bucks, or you just want to impress somebody, you can make your own dimmer switch that will control a light, or control a heater element, or control any other device that you put on the end of that. Now just remember, Yes, they're just, it works just like a dimmer switch in a house. Very, very similar. Matter of fact, the results are exactly the same, but it's just a little bit different. A dimmer switch that you have in the house uh, is rated for your lighting and your lighting fixtures, which uh, we all know that they're going to run off of, what, a half an amp uh, or three quarters of an amp at, at most at full power. Um, they're, that's what they're rated for. So if you're trying to control an element with one of those, you'll find out that as soon as you turn it off, you'll burn it up real quick. So for less than 20 bucks, you can build your own. And I've got this mounted on a piece of wood just as a demonstration. You may be asking the question now, 
well, what about a 240 volt system? How do I wire that? Well, really what you need is first you need a 240 volt source. So instead of this being a neutral line, this is another 120 volt line. But these two lines are 180 degrees, what they call out of phase for each other. So when one is hot or is high, the other one is low, and then they switch. When this one goes high, this one goes low. And when you add those together, you get 240 volts. But the wiring remains the same. Yes, the wiring remains the same unless you have this one connected this one cannot work. Yes, there's 120 volts potential difference sitting here, but it can't do anything in your load unless it has another, another place to flow. So until you can make this connection, you do not have a 240 volt flow. You've got 120 volts on, you got, yeah, you got 120 volts on standby. That, my friends, is the most inexpensive way to wire up a 120 volt or a 240 volt uh, heater element inside any of your sources or any, any of your processes, whether that be a still, whether that be a Bakelite oven, or whether that be some other source uh, sort of process where you're trying to control the thermal energy inside. And last but not least, yes, this requires you to have a separate feedback mechanism, meaning a thermometer, a probe of some sort, so you can track the temperature. Happy distilling.